Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and it looks like Creative Assembly might have teased a possible Vampire Coast character quite a while actually. You see this is artwork that was featured in the Total War art book for Warhammer 3 and as you may know usually there's artwork there of stuff that just hasn't released yet. For example the Gold Wizard, the Great Spined Chaos Beast, hell there was Chimera stuff and even a Bretonian character thing there which we've discussed in the past but I didn't notice this bit of artwork. This this is thanks to Mr. Marvelous on Discord who pointed this out as, uh, yeah, I didn't expect this. So the artwork is pretty themed on Vampire Coast, but you might notice someone there that, um, kind of fits the theme of a certain Captain of the Shade Wraith. Yeah, this character kind of looks like Captain Vangheist, and this was another character that was in the Dreadfleet minigame for Warhammer Fantasy. Uh, not a direct thing, but keep in mind that, well, you know, in-game we don't have any characters that look like that. It's very, very interesting, isn't it? So it's very likely that Vang Heist was either considered at one point or they've just done some artwork for the possibility of the future. And it's not out of the question for, say, Vampire Coast to get a DLC in Total War Warhammer 3. We've seen DLC factions get DLC already, like the Wood Elves and the Beastmen, and, uh... Yeah, the Vampire Coast could do with a little bit of a extra legendary lord, someone pretty cool, someone pretty distinct, and possibly a little update of mechanics here and there just to make them more in line with Warhammer 3. Now, before we get into the character's lore or what the character could bring in, uh, let's listen to a little statement from CA during Rally Point back then when they announced the DLC. To say here is, why Solostra? Why not probably another character from Dreadfleet? And uh, I think something that Games Workshop established quite early on and something we, we were wholly in agreement with was that uh, this isn't a Dreadfleet uh, DLC. Mm. It's a Vampire Coast yeah. DLC. Yeah. So while we can be influenced by Dreadfleet, and they were quite happy for us to take a couple of Lords, three Lords from Dreadfleet would actually make it a Dreadfleet supplement yeah. Yeah. rather than a Vampire Coast supplement. So this is why we didn't have Van Heist in the DLC originally, which is kind of weird considering that out of all the four characters, only one is an actual Vampire Coast character, and Lady Diaphin doesn't really go to the Vampire Coast. She's actually quite far off, you know, so that's why I'm a little bit like, uh, weird. Plus, we wouldn't have considered it a Dreadfleet DLC anyway. Don't get me wrong, I very much like Lady Diaphin, but I do want Van Heist in the future because he's quite cool. We'll go into his lore in a little bit. But the possibility of a Vampire Coast DLC would be kind of cool as we have four legendary characters, each in their own specific locations, but nothing really too far off in the East. So it could add in another campaign, which could be quite fun. The Vampire Coast faction is quite good. Yes, they do need a little bit of work. But yeah, all in all, like, it would be cool to have some more characters fleshed out for that. I see many people asking for a Tomb Kings DLC, but not for a Vampire Coast thing. The character has a decent amount of lore, actually. All the characters that got introduced in Dreadfleet had a decent amount of lore. Uh, we're going to cover it now, and there's a few other reasons why, but let's cover this first. It is whispered in the booze-sodden dens of Sartosa that one of the Dreadfleet's number is crewed by unquiet spirits, the departed shades of mutineers whose treachery has been rewarded by an eternity of torment. The captain of this benighted galleon is the arch-traitor Vangheist, a man whose name is synonymous with the most hated turncoats ever to sail the seas of the world. Vangheist's story is over a hundred years old, though every captain abroad upon the great ocean knows knows it as well as he knows his own ship. The story goes that the Captain Van Heist and the mercenary sea dogs of the warship Stormbreaker were once employed by the Archmage Albrechus von Zeitsch, a gifted practitioner of light magic and dedicated opponent of the Chaos Powers. Albrechus requested that each of the Stormbreaker's crewmen swear a Solomon Oath upon the sacred waters of Manan in exchange for a chest of purest gold, an oath to remain loyal to the wizard's orders no matter what temptation came before them. Van Heist's company were only too happy to oblige, for von Zeich's gold was plentiful and shimmered with all the colours of the sunset. Less than two weeks into their employ, the crew of the Stormbreaker began to regret their haste. 
the Archmage had demanded they sail due north, and those the Stormbreaker's cannons could drive off even the most determined raiders, the Sea of Claws harboured far worse things than men. The first few altercations were easily dealt with. Sea Scorpions were driven away, howling by darts of burning light from the Archmage's fingertips, and rival pirate ships became searing conflagrations of white-hot flame as soon as they raised the black flag. But as Vang Heist and his men plundered ever northward, even the skies became hostile, their shimmering psychedelic colours seeming to form mocking faces and leering demonic skulls. Still, the Archmage would not tell of his true goal. Eventually, curiosity overcame Vang Heist. Whilst the captain entertained the Archmage in a feast to celebrate their victory over a squall of salt harpies, his first mate, Rotten Einrich, forced entry into von Zeich's quarters. There he found an ancient tome, bound in living leather, a book that whispered of a titanic serpent of living fire and the secret of eternal life that lay within its lair. Galvanised by Einrich's tales of immortality ready to be seized, the crew made full sail northwards. It was not long before the coarserating night sky led them to their quarry. As the crew gawped spellbound at the vortex of shifting colours that manifested above them, a great roaring tendril of flame burst from the glowing seas, crested by eight screaming heads that belched clouds of black acid. From the crow's nest of the Stormbreaker, Von Zyck engaged the monster with searing bolts of pure light magic. On the decks below, the crew sent cannonades into its unearthly flesh. Though many of the Stormbreaker's crew were burnt to ash, the Flame Worm was eventually defeated, banished back to the realms of chaos from whence it had emerged. Von Zyck rejoiced, despite his wounds, and bids Vang Heister turn back to port. The beast was vanquished, and their quest was complete. Vang Heist refused. Raising his pistol, he shot the Archmage in the chest, kicking him overboard into shark-infested waters. He would have the secret of immortality, consequences be damned. Ever northward, the Stormbreaker sailed, not realising that it sailed towards its doom. The shrill shrieks of the undulating sky rays above them that drew them on and on until the colours of the sea and the sky became one, and the Chaos Moon, more sleep, grew fat enough to fill the sky. The Stormbreaker passed into that dread realm at the top of the world, and it did not return, at least not as it had left. Though Vang Heist and his crew sailed onward in search of eternal life, they found quite the opposite, for the Realm of Chaos spat them back out into the material realm as unquiet spirits. If the crew had returned as mortals, they may have told tales of stars come to life, of sea demons and unholy packs, of sailing the seas of Morsleib itself. Yet when the Stormbreaker eventually returned to the Great Ocean, the warship and its crew had long rotted away, leaving nothing but a ghost ship doomed to sail the skies forevermore. Vang Heist's warship had become the Shade Wraith, a vessel with no purpose other than to spread the misery of its eternal curse to all who look upon it. Now we'll cover the Shade Wraith uh, because while we don't actually get the ships in game, what we do is a pseudo horde mechanic. I love the lore behind these ships. Uh, like, even Noctilus' one is just super cool. The cadaverous warship, now known as the Shade Wraith, rotted away long ago, yet its essence still clings to the mortal world. Shunned by the moon and the sea alike, it bears a terrible stigma, for the dread vessel floats above the waves as if Minan himself cannot bear to suffer its touch. Draped in icy chains and foul streamers of rot, the cursed galleon carries with it an aura of cold that freezes the blood of those under its shadow. The few sailors who have engaged the Shade Wraith tell of ghastly reverence that descend towards them like sickly moonbeams, given grotesque form, of cannonballs passing straight through as if the ship were made only of mist, and of captive souls screaming within its brig. In recent years, the Shade Wraith has been harnessed by the fell powers of Count Noctilus, and it has been those who oppose the Dreadfleet that feel the terror of its cursed captain's touch. 
So yeah, pretty cool character, and uh, yeah, it would be nice to have like a ghostly character for the Vampire Coast. Just in general, another Legendary Lord would be awesome. I don't know if it's uh, going to be a DLC character or maybe an FLC character, uh, because there's not really much that they can do for the Vampire Coast, unless Games Workshop have been working on an army book on the side, which there are rumours that we will get a Vampire Coast army book for Old World, and that could bring in new units. The thing is, something rather interesting has happened recently too. Cubicle 7, the people behind Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition, have recently been promoting their new Lustria campaign, something that we've been expecting for a long time now, and there is a new Vampire Coast creature. This is called the Brine Wife. It's called a Creature of the Vampire Coast. It could just be a Sirene, but it looks a little bit different. Obviously, it's got feet and stuff. Um... This could be like a possible hero character. It's pretty cool. I actually love the look. Uh, I can't wait to see the rest of this book. And we know we're going to get Vampire Coast lore. So maybe new units could even be found here. And those could be the ones that we see being translated into a possible Vampire Coast DLC. In terms of playstyle, this character could potentially just have a lot of ghost units. Something that could be quite unique to them. Or split up between all the factions with some unique ghosts. Because... I don't know, I like the idea of a ghost army with ghost ships and stuff. It just sounds kind of cool, right? I don't know if the character does need unique mechanics. We do have quite a lot of different unique things there. As the Vampire Coast is obviously quite a unique faction, but it could be that this character could have the story of trying to find the tome to bring back its mortality and, you know, make them immortal, but living immortal rather than undead. And there could be, like, more... Detailed treasure hunts, kind of in a similar sense to the Norsken monster hunt system, but just a bit more fleshed out with much more detail and so on, which could work out quite well. Um, really, it's just because I've been thinking about this a lot. Uh, when Mr. Marvelous pointed out the artwork, I was like, oh yeah, this is fun. And I didn't really think about doing a video for this today, but I couldn't sleep. It's actually quite late at night whilst I'm recording this because I was like, well, maybe this is actually something. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and let's start a bit of a discussion because I'm curious to see what you guys think. Um, obviously, there's loads of other Dreadfleet characters that could fit well here, like, you know, the Tomb King character and so on. But Van Heist fits really well. Out of all the other characters, Van Heist fits really, really well. I really do hope Creative Assembly are thinking of going back to other race packs from Warhammer 2. So, you know, the Vampire Coast, obviously. Uh, the Tomb Kings would be nice to have some further content. Um, but, yeah, we'll just have to see. Have a nice day, guys, and I'll see you all again very, very soon.